Marcus Ryan has it. <laughs> it's good. How are you? Good. Finally, I'm finally glad to get you on the line. I for a moment thought, oh, this is never going to happen because either something fa falls in between on this side or I can't get it off you. And I thought, oh. <laughs> no, no worries. No worries. It, I mean, it, it's going to happen when it's going to happen. And I've dealt with a lot of technical things over the years. So. I can imagine. <laughs> you it's, probably do a lot of these things. I, I have done quite a few at this point. I In fact, I've lost count because if you take the ones I've done and then the ones I've done that were never used or mm. the ones that I couldn't get archives for because I didn't even know where, you know, sometimes they'll say, oh, yeah, we'll put them up. And then I forget where they're going to put them up. And so I just grab what I can. So which is what oh, okay. I, why I got in the practice of recording my own stuff. So, yeah, yeah. because that way, because every once in a while, it really surprised me in the beginning, I would, I would do something and then I'd say, okay, when can I get an archive of this? And they'd say, oh, four or five weeks. And I go, what? That's a long that's, time. So, yeah, that's forever. So I just grabbed it and anyway. So. And you obviously, are you going to use it on your, on your podcast? Yeah, yeah, well? yeah. Yep. Yep. I'll use it on, on my thing and uh, we'll, we'll call it what it is. So what, what do you want to talk about? Man, there's so many things you have no idea. <laughs> well, I I can imagine, but let's say let's say we have less than ninety minutes. So, yeah, what what where do you, where do you want to start? Wait, okay, how... I want I want you to first uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, okay. You know where the the flat Earth came into your life and what was it like the clincher that like converted you or like made you think, okay, this is now serious and I have to go look into this. Got it, got it. The short version is that in 2014, when I was looking through conspiracies and thought I had seen it all. And everybody does, right? As you've seen it all. <laughs> I ran into this thing, and now I can I can actually ask because the documentary team that was following me around all of 2017, they said we need we need you to be specific on exactly what you were looking at. It's like, oh man, that was a while ago. Okay, yeah. so I was looking at a German guy. His name was Cesar, uh, C A E S A R, I believe. That's the YouTube channel, yeah. and he had been making stuff. A lot of it was in German. And even though I come from a fairly strong German family, I didn't really know any German to speak of. So I, uh, but I, but I looked at the pictures, and, and he was talking about flight routes in the Southern Hemisphere and how they're all screwed up, and it only works on a flat map. And I go, okay, that's kind of interesting. That that was kind of an appetizer for me. And then I looked at the NASA channel, where he was talking about how he, you know, he talked to some high-level NASA people, and they were saying that the world wasn't what we thought it was. It actually looked like the UN flag. And again, I thought those were interesting things, but I didn't believe it. Like everybody, it's like, I hate yeah, it. Yeah. I'm going to disprove it. So I shut, you know, I, I set out to, to debunk it, and I was really, really stubborn. So from the summer of 2014, literally up until the beginning of 2015, I was doing research. Off and on, you know, not not nonstop where I just locked myself in my room and, and didn't eat and, you know, when one of those That's things. kind of how I was for the last few months. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And some to, people... To try and disprove this, yeah. And, and it's a lot easier for people to get sucked in now because there's so much content. So yes. I gave up at the beginning of 2015, but the thing that... And, and that's when I made the Flat Earth Clues because, again, the Flat Earth Clues were not necessarily designed as a thing to convince people as much as it was a put it out there and say, okay, prove me wrong. Shut me yeah. down so that I can actually get some sleep and stop thinking about this. <laughs> and the thing that really hooked me was the mainstream media piece from 1954. That was that was the big one for me because, you know, you always hear you, you're, the really good conspiracy people will eventually start quoting things like follow the money always follow the money wherever the money leads that's where you're gonna you're gonna find the biggest stuff and when admiral bird came out in 1954 on that cbs show in the united states when he was talking about antarctica and how there was just made of money and there was all these countries down there and it was just going to get bigger and bigger and there you know might even be conflicts down there because people would be fighting over resources I, that's and I thought, okay, that's that's interesting. And then the exact opposite happened. I mean, the exact opposite, where everybody left the ice at the same time, and they all sat down and agreed without fighting. Said, "Yep, nobody should ever go here." Good night, everybody. And that was and that's it. And they all left the ice. And 
I was going, whoa, whoa, whoa. That, that's not how the world works. The world works on greed and power. Mostly men, you know, men fight over resources. Even, you know, not even a lot of resources they'll fight over. And that's what hooked me was, it's like, okay, whatever's down there is actually bigger than your normal conspiracies. Your normal conspiracies are about money and power. This was something that was actually bigger than money, where money was an, on, an object, basically, where it didn't matter how much money you can make to the resources. We're not going to deal with that. We can't let anybody down here from a corporate standpoint. And yeah. so, I mean, but, and that's why I made a clue, I believe it was clue number two, the bird wall. Uh, so the the first thing was, you know, the the, the lack of the moon missions in, in any sort of film from any country. And then I got into the bird wall, but that's that's what hooked me in the in the very beginning. That's interesting. Yeah. I've, I've been meaning to to try and contact people, uh, you know, the big names in the flat Earth society or the, or the flat Earth mm -hmm. world. You can see like you and Eric Dubay and all those people. And yeah. uh, the longer I've been going into this and trying to get info out of it, the more I see stuff happening between y'all. Um, oh, the infighting, also, yeah. Oh, yeah, and, and, by, and by the way, I have to correct you because you kind of tried to tie us in with the Flat Earth Society. You got to remember. Oh, no, I know there's two. I know there's two. <laughs> well, no, wait, I mean, most of the people in the community, the, most of the bigger names in the community have nothing to do with the society. Not not because we hate the society or anything. It's not I'm not at war with with the Flat Earth Society or societies, depending on who you're talking about. It's that we just don't need them anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah. Social media. You can one person with social media can do a lot of damage. So, I mean, I mean, yeah, Eric DeBay's got his his International Flat Earth Research Society page. But, I mean, I've got EnclosedWorld.com, and it's went through a revamp, and nobody even seemed to notice. Uh, it's, yeah. everyone, it's like it's, nobody goes to, to, to websites anymore. No. It's more like no, you they, have YouTube and Facebook and those things. Yep, that's fine. You yep, get all that, the info there. Yeah, between YouTube and Facebook and maybe some Instagram, maybe some Twitter. That's all you need because, remember, there's only so much time in the day. So, yeah, mm. for, for a series of a couple decades, yeah, people were into the websites. You always had to have – and, of course, corporations still have to have their big, flashy websites. But yeah, for yeah. just general information, you don't need sites anymore. I mean, yeah, I'll browse some of the major news sites like uh, NBC or Fox or CNN just to see what's going on. But yeah. the rest of it – I mean, I'm on – my YouTube browser is basically open all the time. If, my, if I'm sitting in front of this machine, my YouTube browser is up. That I'm refreshing it my, all the time. Mine is also like that, but mine also like all the um, suggestions that it gives up is everything is flat earth related. Everything. There's no yeah. no more anything else that you know <laughs> interesting on YouTube. It's just flat earth. All the oh time. yeah, and and which is why YouTube quietly. Well, you know, Google owns YouTube. Why, when the Google made their phone, they didn't really tell a lot of people this is that flat earth was the number one thing that was searched in 2017 literally That's the number so crazy yeah number one thing and it shouldn't have been it's because the flat earth people are kind of like you and me and all the others are just ravenous you know it's like you know flat earth re you know refresh refresh refresh, refresh. <laughs> That's all you do you have you have thousands and thousands of people doing that you are going to crank that thing up on the priority level so quickly which is and of course also helps because it gets recommended to people that way because YouTube yeah, yeah. says, well, it's trending. We should recommend it to people. It's like, you know, people are doing searches on JFK. Recommended for you. Six different Flat Earth videos. It's <laughs> like, why is that over there? I'm looking at JFK. But it happens time and time and time again. So that's interesting. Well, but. That leads me to one of my questions. Look, I'm going to bounce around in my sure, questions. As we sure, go sure. Around so that what ties that's in fine. with what. Um, that's fine. So because this thing has become so big, um, why hasn't anything official been, I mean, Look, there's a whole bunch of proofs being given by people, you know, in the society mm -hmm. that are pretty in your face, you know. Right. And yet, yet there's no mainstream, uh, like, confirmation or somebody hasn't, like, said something official about it or anything like that. Things like this take time. Unfortunately, with something as large, this, this concept is so huge. It's like turning a, a giant super tanker. You can crank the wheel all you want, but it is going to take a while before that, that thing makes a hard left turn or a hard right turn. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, so think of all the things. Think of what we've done in three years. So you, two days ago literally was the three-year anniversary of, of my very first clue. Well, look okay. at what, what's happened in three years. We've got people from the entertainment community, people from the sports community, 
Uh, Obama, before he he uh, left office, was was talking about it from time to time. Uh, he mentioned it a lot. <laughs> yeah, and there's been, and only even just recently, I, the, I, I mean, there's been. There, it's it's taken a while. We're we're at that last stage where all of a sudden, main, because the numbers have gotten so huge, that mainstream is now finally grasping onto this. Uh, the the documentary team that followed us around in 2017 are going to release their documentary in 2018. Uh, there's a reality show that's doing uh, screen testing right now for for this thing for 2018. Um, there's a bit. Uh, did, did you tell us a bit more about that? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, I can't give you any names, but it's a Los Angeles team, and you got to remember that Los Angeles and Hollywood has been sniffing around this since really 2015, since the end of 2015. That's when they got into it. And they were doing, but but nobody again. And people have heard me say this before. Nobody wants to be the first person on the dance floor. You're afraid yeah. of looking dumb. And so a lot of production companies were really really nervous. I mean, really, if you were a production company, you want to be the first person to put out a flat Earth show on television. I mean, literally, I watched a woman. Here's a perfect example for you. I watched a woman. I'll, I'll mention it's it was she was from True Television out of New York, and she was totally ahead of this game. And she said, look, I, she pitched it to him in a board meeting and said, look, I think Flat Earth is trending. I think it's going to go through the roof. This was before B.O.B. This is before uh, Kyrie Irving. This is before any of those guys. And they fired her. <laughs> they just really? Said, oh, yeah, of course. It's like, you know, she does this in a public meeting. It's like, you've gone off the deep end. You are out of here. <laughs> so that was the end of her. But uh, and and ever since then, there have been people. I mean, the documentary team that approached us last year, they quietly were shooting footage. They were up here several times with Patricia and I down in Houston, down at the national conference. And then when we went to the national conference, that's when it really and I knew it was going to. Uh, it's too interesting a story not to cover. And so I did 14 interviews down there in two days with wow. you know some big hitters you know hbo was down there uh vice i'm sorry hbo vice uh buzzfeed was down there uh, i heard howard stern was team was down there but they never reported anything uh abc news they flew in a team it was it, it was really really cool so anyway during that whole thing you know that that creates more buzz the media feeds off itself you know, they, yeah. it's, it's cyclical. So then this Los Angeles team, they decided to, to get involved and now they're going to try to pitch it as a reality show. And I, th I've i always thought it would be a great reality show because like you said, I mean, the, the there's already infighting and drama within the community. We don't even have to write a script. It just writes itself. So, so are you aware of all that drama? Am I aware of it? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty aware of it. I mean, since I don't, I mean, there was drama literally in the first couple of weeks that this thing started. Mm. Meaning, uh, like, for example, Matt Boylan, who I'm sure you're aware of, Matt, you know, NASA yeah. Channel, and Eric Dubé. The, there was really just the three of us. And, and then, of course, there was Cesar uh, from Germany doing his thing. And then Jay Henning Caligia, Caligia, whatever is it's a silly name. But he was doing his stuff a little bit. But the th but Eric and Matt and I, um, we I never talked. I still to this day I think I talked to Eric once when he snuck in on a hangout. But Matt was literally the first person to contact me, and he was saying why you know he contacted me. His instincts are good. I'll give you that. Where uh, after Clue Two, and he goes why? Are, and he was well. I'm sorry. He was trying to contact me at Clue Two, and by the time I got to Clue Eight, he calls me and he says. Hey, why aren't you returning my texts? And I said, because I don't have a cell phone. And <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Well, and I didn't. I literally did not own a cell phone at the time. So I owned a landline. I love landlines. So, yeah. uh, but but uh, this goes into the drama. So literally, like, within the first two emails, he starts, because he wasn't going to do interviews. He, he said he didn't want it. He was being aloof. And so I was doing interviews in his place, basically. And then he oh, starts okay. writing me emails saying, hey, I need you to start working into your interviews that you hate the Catholic Church. I want you to start attacking the Catholic Church. I'm going, what? Why? <laughs> what? <laughs> what, what? What is that going to do with anything? And he was dead serious. I still have the emails from, from three years ago. And it's like th that was the beginning of the drama right there where he was. And, and it's like, no, dude, I'm not. He goes, well, if you don't, I'm going to you know come out and try to discredit you, which he did. And then Eric did the same thing. Eric, but not directly. He went through one of his people and he says, okay, Eric's really upset with you. This guy told me. He goes, he wants you to never mention Crow 777 and use his moon videos ever again. 
because he's not a flat earther and don't ever bring up the Orlando Ferguson map, the flat and stationary earth map. And, and I, I didn't know who Eric was. I honestly didn't know who he was because he hadn't made a lot of videos. And, and uh, I mean, I didn't know he definitely didn't know he had written a book. And I'm going, wait, who's this guy? You can't tell me yeah. what to, I mean, look, <laughs> this thing isn't anywhere near far along. So yes, that, I mean, I'm telling you that because that sort of drama just never stopped. There was always, everybody wants to do it their own way. Everybody's got their own opinion. Uh, and if you don't do it a certain way, it, it kind of turns into the politics thing where people, you know, it's like, well, if he's not listening to me, he's obviously the enemy. You know, yeah, yeah. It's, so, so, what is your relationship with Eric now? I mean, have you when last have you heard of him? Because I saw at one point his stuff was taken down from YouTube. Well, um, that was very recently. His stuff was taken yeah. down from YouTube. Um, so what happened was is that Eric really was kind of his own island because he was over in Thailand. He wasn't in the states, yeah. and he he was he, he made like an enemies list, which I know you're from South Africa. So like the last time I even heard of an enemies list was like Richard Nixon. Yeah, the president of the United States back and said he did. Richard Nixon had an enemy's list and Eric actually posted his online. And I was num I was number one at the top of the list. People he hated. And it was basically he wanted to be king king of the world. And he wasn't gonna settle and, and I get that. You know, this work we're, we're a competitive species. Uh, you know, it's not just sports and entertainment and politics. You're wherever people are just competitive in general and he wanted to be, you know, the top top guy. And so he was just shooting down anybody that that uh, that may have been competitive with him. And he and I never, ever spoke. But what happened was and so but at the same time, he was always keeping he kept himself at a really clear distance from the rest of the community. And it came to a head last year, just before the conference, when he got on an interview with Eddie Bravo, if you know who that guy is. Yeah, uh, I saw that. Yeah, he got on that interview. And initially, when we were going to do the conference, he was absolutely invited. It's like, okay, finally, we can do some community thing. Eric can be brought into the fold. Everything will be great. And we also invited Matt. Matt refused flat out. No play on words there. And Eric also, <laughs> Eric also refused. But he did it really politely and said, hey, best of luck with the conference. And then when he got involved with the Eddie Bravo interview, he all of a sudden condemned the conference. And say, he thought, I'm sure he thought that his, you know, he was going to take off from that point and he didn't need us anymore. And so it's like, you know what, that com what do you call it, Shill Fest 2017. And uh, you know, anyone that goes there, you can't trust. You can only trust me. It's like, blah, blah, blah. And he did this on air, on video. It's like, oh, you're killing me. So at that point, I just wrote him off and, and did it on, on publicly on air. I said, look, I put the olive branch out there for two years with you. If you're not going to listen to us now, if you're going to keep going down the the, the hate speech thing, uh, fine. It, it, you do do what you want. And then, well, you know, shortly afterwards, shortly after the conference was over, uh, YouTube brought the hammer down on him and banned his his channel forever. And he had to rebuild from scratch. And it was all because of the. And I I know everyone's got their own opinions for everything, but I'm I'm not a big person on discriminating against particular groups and because i think flat earth is beyond that i think it's above that yeah and so when he makes a four-hour video you know, it was a reprint kind of a re-edit of adolf hitler versus the jew world order yeah. it's like dude come on i mean yeah it got a whole bunch of hits and a lot of thumbs up but that's what eventually got his his channel taken down so that's my, that's my thing with eric we will probably never speak unless we get on some sort of project together but i don't think that's going to happen and let me end it with this the reason why that's not going to happen, this is a warning to anybody else that's out there, is you got to remember who the producers are in the <laughs> entertainment industry. The producers yeah. are a certain demographic, and it's like, if you're going to attack, in fact, that's what the true television people told me right off the bat. They did not bring him for screen tests, and she told me, she goes, look, just so you know in advance, she goes, no one's going to touch Eric from a, from a, from a mainstream standpoint. They're, they can't. There's there's two there's a conflict of interest there. Even if you like the guy, even if you like his stuff, he cannot be vetted. So anyway, moving on. What else? You got? I also I also heard that uh, he was uh, plan There was some talk about uh, Eric Dubay being on Joe Rogan's show and and having like a debate with Neil deGrasse oh, Tyson. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know anything that, about that? Because yeah, been yeah, for that, I do. I think seems to come up. It, so here's the deal with that. I initially thought it was just 
a rumor. The because yeah, also- because Joe Rogan had mentioned it in passing to somebody uh, last month, and mm. he had said that yeah because he because Joe Rogan he is as as people hate him but he is very internet savvy. I mean we're talking about a B actor in the United States who went bounced around a couple different careers, and now he's doing a combination of annou- announcing. Uh, ultimate fighting things and doing podcasts but his podcasts are very popular he, whoever's whoever's producers are they're doing a bang up job because he has a massive internet presence to where he can get just about any guest he wants on now yeah. and he is friends with Neil deGrasse Tyson and somewhere along the line he asked Neil if he if he was willing to do a debate with a flat earther and I don't know we don't have the recording of what exactly Neil said but Neil must have said, oh, well, think about it or something. Whatever indication there was, Joe must have thought that was like uh, it was going to happen. Because then he mentions a second time, just like a week or 10 days ago, to another guest and says that it, this is twice now and says, oh, yeah, well, it's going to happen in February. And so just for the heck of it, I happen to look at it. And you can look at this up online. You can type in Eric DeBay, Joe Rogan, Neil Tyson. And yeah. you'll see the Joe Rogan uh, archive list and his upcoming guests. And sure enough, in February, it does say there's no date tied to it. It says Eric DeBay versus Neil Tyson. And, ah, that's so, that's and it's like, I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. If I had to bet, if I had to use Vegas money mm-hmm. on this, I would say mm-hmm. that there's a high probability it's not going to happen because Neil has been very clear that he does not do debates with anybody about anything that's not his job he goes on he goes on stage he's a man with a microphone he goes on stage he says science is great space is fantastic good night everybody and that's it he (laughs) he does that for like 90 minutes and then he walks off stage and that's his role he goes around to universities he goes around to public things they give him all sorts of money he uses it to buy a very nice wine collection from what i understand that's been featured in magazines and that's what he does. He and he runs a planet. He technically he runs a planetarium. I don't know if he actually shows up there more than once a month, but uh, he runs the Hayden Planetarium. And so I do, the, the reason why I'm doubtful that that will happen is that, and if it does, then I'll think there's actually something funny going on because there's no reason uh, Neil Tyson should do it that benefits him. That meaning yeah, you know yeah. he's sixty. I think he's sixty. Maybe, and is like, look, there's he could do what he's doing now, pretty much every day until he dies, and make you know plenty of money and be invited to all the panels and get you know backstage passes at NASA all day long, and going up against a flat earther in a debate. I don't care if it's Eric or anybody. There's nothing good will come of, come of it from him. And and let would me, you would I debate Neil deGrasse? I was begging to. I've always been begging to debate Neil deGrasse really? Tyson. Oh God, yes. I, in fact, I'm when I recently put out my declaration of war video, which was uh, they, that's my 2018 mission, which is just calling out science. And I've told people. I, in fact, it's in the description of every video now that I have that says, yeah. "Look, you fly me out to wherever you want. You put me up in a hotel, and I will face down." any scientific panel you have. And I don't care what the odds are. One on five, one on 10. You put me up there as long as the only qualifier, the only qualifier is that someone on that panel or advising the panel, supervising the event has a master's degree in a physical science. Meaning yeah. don't put me up against a bunch of freaking freshmen from MIT. That's not <laughs> gonna that's not gonna help anybody. Get me someone who's actually established because most of them won't put their neck on the line. But Eric, even even on Eric's worst day, he should be able to... Here's the good thing. If it actually happens, even on Eric's worst day, he should be able to take down Neil no problem. He's got the material down. He knows all the arguments. Neil will try to phone it in. He won't do any homework. He probably won't even look up Eric DeBay. Uh, of course, Joe Rogan would moderate the event, which would not be in Eric's favor. It would be in, in Neil's favor. And it would be short. Yeah. So, I mean, Neil's not going to sit there for longer than an hour. So, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's very. Isn't, isn't Joe Rogan uh, also, he was a moon guy at one stage. I remember watching a video of him saying, there's no way we went to the moon. And then as soon as Neil deGrasse Tyson um, went on his show, yeah. he's, it was like he did a complete 180. And mm-hmm. now he's all for the moon landings. And I don't know. Well, it's like, I don't know. Somebody's like 
there's a there's a there's a little bit more of a story than that um what happened was when joe rogan and again joe rogan's going to go down in history as the only conspiracy guy to ever become a non-conspiracy guy meaning (laughs) he back in the day this is back in the day it was not even that long ago to be honest Mm -hmm. what he was he was going on podcasts and he was attacking he was really big anti-nasa he was really big anti-apollo it's like the moon landings did not happen. Yeah, there's no way. Real conviction. And and people forget that in a debate, if both sides being equal, the person that usually wins is the one with the most conviction because they believe it more. And Joe yeah. Rogan has such fantastic conviction. I had chills listening to some of his early stuff. And mm. then he went dark for a while, meaning he wasn't on anything for a while. For some reason, I, I don't know if it was less than a year or whatever. And when he comes out, and, you know, when he comes back into the spotlight, all of a sudden he's got a brand new show on the Sci-Fi Network with a one-year contract called Joe Rogan Questions Everything. And in the very first episode, he recants everything he ever said bad about NASA. Could not make that up. I mean, like, it's, it's all my little just apologized. It's like, well, you know, I didn't mean it, blah, blah, blah. It's like, what the heck happened? And obviously, <laughs> somebody... But the re- the reasons that he gave, what reasons did he give? I mean, what, what he didn't did he not say he why didn't. he didn't. He didn't. He he supposedly confessed to Alex Jones that they had gotten to him. They basically, you know, nothing special. They just threatened his family. That is basically yeah. it. It's like, look, dude, you play ball because he was winning. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. He was Joe Rogan was winning these debates against scientists. You know, they're really dry guys. They they do yeah. not debate well. It's like they, it's one or two syllable answers, and they just don't debate well. And Joe was winning. They could not have him to. They couldn't keep him doing that. So they got him out. They gave him a one year contract for Sci Fi Network. It's like if he gets the ratings, fine. He gets picked up. He didn't. It was one year and done. But now he's got podcasts forever. But after that show, you know, after that show was done, he became an anti-conspiracy guy meaning he talks to guests he might as well be like a, a b-rated talk show host that's all he is yeah. i mean i i and i've mentioned this and he probably will never invite me on his show but i, I might because one of my first questions would be is like do you believe in anything anymore because nobody comes out of this and says oh there aren't any conspiracies because that's the first thing i'd ask i'd say okay what do you believe in now? Do you believe in 9-11? Do yeah. you believe in Pearl Harbor? Do you believe in JFK? Does any of this stuff ring a bell with you anymore? So it's, uh, yeah, so that's what happened. And yeah, and, and and he went the other way. He For some of his first guests were Neil Tyson. He brought in astronauts. He brought in science, you know, other scientists. And he's really playing it up. And he's not, again, he's not dumb. Whereas he, he knows where the ratings are. His producer is very slick. And Joe is right on board with that. So every time he brings up Flat Earth, it's like he's just hitting a hornet's nest with a big stick. And, you know, the flat <laughs> earther just come out. It's like, Joe Rogan, we hate him so much. And it works. It's absolutely perfect. So he's very savvy in that regards. So Because uh, that, that show that he did with uh, Eddie Bravo, where he interviewed him about the flat earth, and Eddie was making good points, but then, you know, he was outnumbered by, the, I don't know what he's, uh, the guy is that uh, is on the show with Joe. Right, right, um, right. Yeah, his, co- his, but, his producer guys. Co-host. Yeah, yeah. 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 They teamed up against Eddie and they like mocked him about it. You know, you, you could see that <clears throat> at one point Eddie was like, yeah, I'm just having fun. Meanwhile, he was actually saying, look, you idiots. Why? You know, he could see that he was outnumbered and there was no way that he could say anything positive or anything good would come out of that right. uh, interview uh, after they, you know, did what they did to him. And, and, and there's. And there's some people that just don't interview as well as others. So, I mean, Eddie Bravo, look, that's not his main profession. His main profession used to be old, whatever that jujitsu. Kicking ass. <laughs> yeah, he's fighting. Yeah, kicking ass. That's really what he did. He was a, he was a hell of a fighter. Uh, and, you know, the B.O.B., for example, the rapper B.O.B., heck of a yeah, rapper. Yeah. I mean, the guy was nominated for a Grammy. Not a lot of rappers can say that. And he does not interview well off the cuff. Now, he'll do some great pre-production stuff. But don't sit him down and expect to get some really, really great answers. Kyrie Irving, on the other hand, interviews well, which I think is outstanding for a 25-year-old pr- professional basketball player. You know, he's 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 actually very fluid with what he says. So I, Eddie Bravo, he'll do fine, but he's got the connections, which is good. I mean, the, let me be let me be clear here that. The only reason Eric DeBay would even have the chance of a debate with Neil Tyson is because of Eddie Bravo. That's it. Eddie Bravo. Does Eddie, 
allegedly Eddie uh, emailed him and uh, Joe Rogan emailed uh, Neil Tyson. Well, yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and about. but Eddie also would talk to Joe and say, "Look, you got to get this guy on because you know that Eddie vouches for Eric and Joe vouches for Neil, and so that's how <laughs> yeah. it would that's how it would work out, which is fine. Again, it, you know, moves the thing forward. I'd love to be in there, but I, you know, I've already had some of my opportunities, uh, especially with that that astronaut over in um, London recently, which which was fine. I, I don't mind. Do you also what, what's your general like feeling on uh, when you try to explain this whole thing to people, uh, whether it's over the phone or interview wise, or just you know people that you see around, or any type of situation where it comes up and people, you know, ask you a bunch of questions. Obviously, you've done this a while, so you pretty much have all the answers waxed. Right. And <clears throat> there's nothing that someone can bring up that might stump you, or, or has it been that someone has actually brought up something that you don't know? No. No, I haven't gotten an original question in um, months. Now I've gotten some some slight variations of different questions, but the, and which is actually helps the flat Earth, which is there's only so many questions you can ask, and yeah. once you get those down, however you're going to figure out how to answer them, then you're just going. I'm not, I won't say going through the motions, but then you just kind of have to read the person. And say, okay, what are they? What are they hoping to get out of this? Are they are they hoping to just be able to walk away with it, saying, oh, okay, this guy doesn't know anything? Are they trying to spin it into a flat Earth is absolutely insane story, uh, or, or are they really looking for it? Uh, it doesn't. It for me, it doesn't really matter because the, remember what I try to tell people is, you're not supposed to convince. You're not going to convince somebody sitting down over coffee or lunch or even really a two hour seminar. You, all you have to do is put the seed in their head and get them to go home and start looking it up. Because once they start looking it up, that's when they're doomed. When they, yeah. when they go, when you go into, especially in YouTube, if you go into YouTube and you've never seen it before, and I love watching people when they do it, they type in flat earth and you know, you get just this wall of content that is in front of you <laughs> it's, and it's never ending. There's so many videos now. It's, it's lifetimes worth of videos out there and, and they're going, it's it it throws people especially conspiracy people it throws them for an utter loop because they're like wait how long has this been out there it's yeah like, exactly how, how did it's like a whole it's really it's like a whole nother band of television stations on your remote that you didn't even know were there you know going up to it's like you know if you type in like a thousand through 1100 <coughs> it's completely new stations with content <laughs> it's like no way and you see it i mean because there's so many people doing great things and these are really quality videos out there that are that people are making so for me when it, it varies i i i treat everyone as individuals or groups i try to feel the room i try to feel i've gotten really good but i was trained to do that uh, meaning when i was doing my uh, my proprietary software training I was had to feel out the room and when I was doing tech support I was doing a lot of conference calls and so I had to feel the temperature of the room and kind of adjust my message to what was going on there and I just really applied flat earth to that so if they're hostile you take a little step back and you don't you know try to trade punches with them and you know you let them take their shots and you say yeah but this yeah but have you thought about this how about this over here uh, if they're really receptive you just start rolling and it's like yeah, yeah. You, you try to steamroll them. Uh, I've, uh, I've also had a few of those where you can see that the people, you know, they're willing to listen. And then the more you tell them, the more they're like, okay, tell me more, tell me more. But you get those people that I've actually had friends tell me, listen, because I visited them, go out of my house. Go, you're not welcome here anymore just because I brought up the flat earth. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah I, so I, that I'm like, well, <laughs> that's your problem. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. leave now, but uh, at least I know you know about this, and I haven't seen that guy since then, so I don't know if he's like done research on it, or is he just one of those people, because he, he was like, yo, so what about Elon Musk and those people? Oh, don't do... Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if you want to talk about that in a bit, that's fine. Uh, the Elon Musk thing, which happened recently. Oh my god, what a nightmare. Yeah, that is also on the agenda anyway, so you can talk okay. about it. I mean, that, that the, fake car launch that he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The people, the people though, that, um, that, that turn against you, you gotta remember, it. this hits... This hits pretty hard, and I was lucky that I was I was thinking there was like a less than one percent chance that some people wouldn't be able to take it, and and there would be a rise in like suicides and stuff like that because it, it hits you pretty yeah. hard. Meaning, yeah. it because it ripples back in time, 
uh, the, the analogy I've been throwing at people recently is it's like you've told somebody who's like 30 that they're adopted is like and, and people say because people will say well, why does it matter of the flat earth and it's like why does it matter i it, it's like it doesn't matter until you start believing it meaning yeah. you can think about your life daily but all of a sudden you start believing this it changes everything sort of like when you're adopted if once you start believing you're adopted you start having weird flashbacks going all the way when you're six years old going okay what exactly were my conversations with my parents back you know back then about <laughs> and what was going on um, that's the same thing with this. When you tell somebody, when all of a sudden they start believing in flat earth, they, they get this ripple in time going all the way back to their first grade classroom. And they go, yeah, that globe was there. And then it was still there. And it was there when I graduated and it's everywhere. And, and yeah, they, they start, they, it hits them, it hits them all at once. And so, yeah, it, but some people do not, depending on the level of science they have had, over the years and and i it's it's very very true if they like for, if you have a master's degree in any physical science they're more or less doomed there's nothing you can you can do for them because they're gonna have to wait until mainstream absolutely beats them over the head with it everybody else yeah. is pretty much fair game if they're an, amateur astronomers tough sell if they're boaters if they're like lifelong people that live on the sea that's also tough because yeah, they, they depend on it yeah, well, yeah, they depend on it, and they also believe that they every time they see a ship go off into the distance, it's gone over the curb. You see that multiple mm -hmm. times every day for your life. Yeah, you're you're also in trouble because you immediately say curve, curve, curve. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, sorry. Do you want? Did you want to talk about the Elon Musk thing now, or or? Uh, uh it doesn't matter. Or, or I mean, later? Do you, I mean, do you have a list? Yeah, I've got a list, but like I said, we jump around. Oh no, no, we can, we can we can we can follow the list. That's that's fine. What what? what okay, cool. Uh, um. Uh, I was on like uh, a path where uh, Eric Dubay made a video at one point uh, mocking all of you, like you and uh, I think he did uh, Jake as well. You know Jake? Oh, yeah, well. yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, the the skits he did. Yep, yep. Yeah, what, you want, he you dressed want my... up as a woman. And, yeah, no. what, what do you think about that? That was that was about the epitome. That's the, the pinnacle of the flat earth drama right there where Eric... Yeah. <laughs> Eric decided he was going to attack everyone. I mean, literally, yeah. and, and, I've, and I've said, look, you want to know when someone's in trouble. And, and Eddie Bravo called him out on this, which was, okay, who do, you, who do you endorse? You know, fine, you hate everybody. Who do you endorse? And Eric couldn't say anything. And that, that you know, he wants to literally. So he didn't have an answer. He didn't know he didn't have an answer. He just sat there, just crickets. And he did not answer him. It's like, oh, dude, you just killed, you just killed yourself. Um, yeah, when Eric made those skit things, uh, I mean, actually it was, it was actually, some of them were pretty funny, but at the same time, uh, he was just sending the message out that he was not going to play well with others. Uh, it's fine. I, I get it. You know, there's, you know, there's competition. Uh, there's an old saying by a sports guy here in the United States, which was, uh, winning, winning isn't everything. It's the only thing. And this is so true with some people. And in his case, yeah, he, he absolutely saw he was he had a jump on it and he had made a book and he, his videos came out two months before mine. The problem he had was is that his videos were not exactly entry level and which helped yeah, me they, not for the everyday guy no no not for the man on the street and and it was the same with yeah. matt that was the same with jay henning and a cesar they all had good stuff and there was quite a bit of content out there but nobody had made the dummies guide yet and that has that's how it happens with just about anything you've got to have somebody literally walk up and say okay here's where we go here's letter a here's the letter b here's no. the letter c <laughs> in regards to flat earth and that's what i did my flat earth clues were very very basic there was almost no math to speak of and it was and it was very straightforward and and they were they were compartmentalized but where it worked was once you got through those then you could go back and look at eric's stuff and look at matt's stuff and say yeah. and so all of a sudden it, it didn't just end with the clues you could you could go back and there's more content and then people started making their own and it inspired people to make more content and so now i don't even know i i have to i've got a list a playlist in my channel called the the flat earth shortlist for new people and i'm not even on it it's just 25 videos oh, is that link that you sent people that want uh, like a basic player? yeah 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 it's the basics okay. for for anybody that's out there and it starts out i think with marty leeds 
and goes on with some other people. And there's some really great stuff ranging from five minutes to two hours. And there's a yeah. lot of great intro videos out there, but inevitably people do come back to mind because the general population, you, you got to spoon feed them. You, you do. And, mm. and it's fine. I, I don't mind. And I really haven't even had that much of a demand by the time you get through the two hours uh, because people say, oh, aren't you going to make more clues? And I go, well, I might make one when, when the whole thing breaks open. But uh, believe it or not, out of the emails and phone calls I get, I, hardly anybody asks for more clues. Because there's... Yeah, this... it's... It... Go ahead. Uh, no, I wanted to say, it's, it It feels like at one point I came to a stage where I felt like, okay, now people are starting to repeat stuff uh, right. on various videos. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you're constantly on the look for new information or new proof or you know stuff that can further convince me that this is not just uh like a, a cia psyop or right. uh, controlled leak because i've also seen a lot of stuff about that you know people saying that this is, whole thing is a, a controlled leak to get someone yeah to get yeah. Uh, opinion but, and attention away from other stuff that's happening in the world i don't even believe and i've been looking at i you know me i'm i'm flat earth 24 7 i don't actually yeah. think there are real agents yeah. in the community i don't i've i've met most of them most of the people in community it's like i think this thing now did the had the did the idea come from them eh, maybe 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 the way it was put out maybe but uh, the, everyone involved in the community is i mean yeah there's some some people that are uh, more secretive than others there's people that are more angry than others and there's people that, that put out a lot of content and they're more open-minded i mean there's what what's interesting for me is is that flat earth opens up opens the minds up for everything else so people yeah. you know I, it's amazing the amount of videos i'll see where it's like they're into flat earth and it's like all right let me tell you about this thing and they'll go off on a completely different tangent uh but <laughs> but still the flat earth is is what got them there which has been which has been fun it's been inspiring to watch and what about the people that were part of the community but are no longer like uh, jake specifically i mean he made a video at one point where he totally like he claimed he debunks the ae map uh where the sun uh, yeah. comes up in the wrong direction in australia for people with you know as we think it's circles around right the earth, right, right but then it, the, the angle is wrong it, and, it, and it's wrong there's nothing you can say about it that's you know, I mean, what's your opinion about that? Oh, no, no. The When it comes to Jake, I, first first thing I would say is that nobody leaves. This is a line from JFK. Nobody leaves the agency. No, Nobody leaves Flat Earth. I, I have yet to see anyone that's left it entirely because there's always, I mean, even back in the day when Jonathan uh, Macedo was my co-host, he says, he's like, yeah, that was the end of 2015. It's like, oh, I'm out for a while. Flat Earth's not going anywhere. And then all of a sudden the Neil deGrasse Tyson and B.O.B. thing happened. It's like, I'm back in. You know, <laughs> it's like when all of a sudden, you know, it's this surge of stuff happens. People will have, I watched, um, there was a big channel, Delano TV. He left. He was like, that's ah, my last Flat Earth video. And then as soon as the SpaceX thing happened, he's like, let me tell you about SpaceX and Flat Earth. <laughs> and, and and so when Jake, yeah, I'm fine. Jake changed his channel name and, and did whatever. I watched ODD back out of the conference and yet he's still making Flat Earth videos. Uh, J yeah. There's the thing... And I feel bad in some ways because flat earth is such a high level of conspiracy. I mean, it's the highest level of conspiracy in my opinion. It is. It is, is that once you think you're going to leave, what exactly are you going to do when you get out of this? Yeah. You're going to go back to dinosaur hoaxes. You're going to go back to Bigfoot or JFK. Everything just seems so uh, pale by comparison. I, I for me, but everything I, ties up. It seems. Yes. Do yeah. Ev I everything mean, dovetails. Especially the SpaceX. Thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah, Jake leaving, pff, whatever. I mean, and people, by the way, people working on other maps, I don't mind. Remember, uh, you probably heard me say that if, if Flat Earth was a university, that I would be the freshman recruiter, it, which means, yeah. look, the, the basic map that I threw out there is still the AE map because it's easy to understand. If you're into advanced map yeah. making, hey, great, fantastic. You can hook those guys when they get in. But you can't show somebody a four-dimensional <laughs> map that has never even looked at flat earth before you might as well be showing them a calculus book it's net freshmen get spooked really really easily so if jake has another map hey great go for that or if he wants to tear down the ae map fine some of the guys in london were doing the same thing and some of you some of the people in, in the united states other than jake were doing the same thing i don't i don't mind that but you better have a replacement and it better be easy to follow because what i'm saying is 
the map that you have will have no traction to the general public. The only map that currently has traction is the AE map. I didn't invent it. Somebody else invented it. I just showed it to people. Uh, I Heck, if I had to do it again, I'd still show people the Orlando Ferguson map, which is which is great because it's got four corners on the outside, outside of the the don't or outside of the the initial dish and. So cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of fun, but but people said um, uh, people turned me away from that because it didn't have any because they say the real map doesn't have any curvature at all. Plus, they said again, you find out new things. Uh, they said uh, don't use the word roulette table when describing the map because the Orlando Ferguson map looks exactly like a freaking roulette table, and they said you can't yeah. because when you add up all the numbers of a roulette table, they add up to six hundred and sixty six. And I'll be darned if that wasn't true. It's like, ah, crap. <laughs> so it's like, what else can I use? What like about, a hubcap or what? Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, don't say snow globe because I heard that interview that you did with uh, um, Russell Brand. Russell Brand. And yep. you completely shot. You, 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 I felt sorry for you because you, even though I knew what you wanted to say and portray it, and he was like, you know, it's hard to, to like, well, no, uh, no, do I, you, you got to remember that's that not completely in, over. So. I can remember how I said, like, I, I try to feel the room out. And in his case, I don't yeah. care what the host wants to wants to see as long as they can see it. Meaning I tried all sorts of different things. And then once got into the snow globe thing, Russell's like, click snow globe. Absolutely. Because he yeah. knew his listeners. He's going, they'll told everyone knows what a freaking snow globe is where he was and apparently it's big in Britain anyway. And so he's yeah. like snow globe. So in fact, not only did he, yeah, I know he came after me for it a little bit, but he liked it so much that he titled the name of that show, you know, flat earth and snow globe thingy. Uh, <laughs> I had a guy like a month after that said, he made up something I hadn't even heard about. He's like, he goes, it's like, cause I said, it's like, it's like a big building, which is really wide, but a really low ceiling. And he goes kind of like a pizza box. And I go, a pizza box? <laughs> and I go, you know what? I'll go with a pizza box. Sure. Why not? It's like a pizza box. <laughs> because it re- inside. Because because he resin yeah, because there's a pizza inside. He that's how he visualized it. I was like, all right, sure, why not? And so I've got, I don't know, like fifteen different things now that I can use. As long as I as actually l- thought Yeah, go, you're gone. Go, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, because when I saw that the interview was uh, with Russell Brand, he was going to interview you i kind of had the feeling that he was going to be one of those open-minded people that like snaps onto it and starts promoting it and being for it and actually you know being part of it and he did exactly the opposite he, he you know pushed it away and he didn't take it seriously at all he no. joked he made a joke out of it yeah and that he was did. so weird because he's... but but at the same time I remember very few hosts will say on air on air, mind you, but there's two there's two levels when you do those interviews. One is the host, which they, they've got to cater to the audience. They have to pander to the audience because mm. they're afraid of going against them. You know, they, they've got live chat things next to them, especially nowadays. Um, but the other thing is the producers, which is those are the guys you talk to even more than the uh, the, the the online hosts. You're you're they're, you're going back and forth. They're the ones setting everything up, and they're the ones that are getting the feedback. And so in Russell's case, for example, he considers himself intelligent enough that he challenges his producers to blindside him. So having me come on to do the Flat Earth, he didn't know, I think, even 15 minutes before I got on that it was going to be Flat Earth. And so he's, oh. the, he's, he's like looking for them to throw him to uh, them to throw him enough of a curveball that he stumbles. And in his case, he let me go for a while and he knew that I, I had a little head of steam built up. And yeah. it, again, people forget. It's like, look, it's their show. And people say, why didn't you interrupt Russell? I'm going, cause it's Russell's show. If he wants to go off and do a funny accent and, and, you know, spend the next 10 minutes of the show, start whatever he, what the hell he was doing. That's fine. I'm not going to be derailed, but at the same time, what you don't want to do is you don't want to piss him off and and get you cut off the reason why is this yeah. forget about the host it's the producers the producers are the ones that invite you back it's not it's never the host it's yeah, the producer yeah. they so in, in their case they couldn't have been happier and because of that one that's how i got another bbc thing which is how i got the uh the good morning britain thing and you know again i caught caught some hell for good morning britain because they said oh you should have attacked more and i'm going no 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 if you're being piped in through Skype, you don't want them to cut. You don't give them an excuse to cut you off. 
You make it through yeah. the show. The producers couldn't have been happier, and you will get picked up by other things. You've got some. You have to play within the rules if possible. Uh, so that's what I do. Not to. Uh, we kind of headed off, Jake. Now I had a question about him, and and uh, with what he used. To, to, to say okay I'm out now that specific uh, you know about the sun not coming up at the, the angles <clears throat> in Australia and stuff like that mm -hmm. <clears throat> what's your what's your opinion on I mean surely do you think he's got a point I mean well, that's how people see it down there they use compasses and all those type of stuff so they proved it I mean when it comes to the sky do we have all the answers no we don't uh, is, what I absolutely do know is there's multiple projection systems and if, you, if you've ever worked in software or 3D modeling or instancing or, or whatever we use, all the stuff we've been doing for the last 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, it, let's put the sun aside for a second um, because some of the, because a lot of people don't live on the Southern Hemisphere. But when it comes to like the stars, people will say, well, you know, the stars run clockwise or counterclockwise and you can actually see them both simultaneously if you do time lapse from the equator. And I go, you're absolutely yeah. right. Or Polaris, how you can't see it if you go far enough south. Um, when it comes down to that, look, we're talking about a system that is so big, a planetarium, a building that is so large that you can get away with multiple projection systems because people can only be in one place at one time. For example, let's say you're, I don't know, a few hundred miles south of the equator, your friend's a couple hundred miles north of the equator. You say, hey, I'm looking at the belt of Orion. He goes, yeah, same here. He goes, but my middle star is red. And you say, no, my middle star is blue. Who's right? Now, you're probably both right because yeah. you're technically looking at, at the same thing. And then I'll say, um, I, I go, you want something even weirder. It's something easier to understand. And that's a blood moon, which is how is the blood moon even possible? on a flat earth because technically there's no earth in between the sun and the moon. So how is a blood moon yeah. happening? And that's because the moon is its own projection system. It is, it is literally its own light source. It's not reflecting anything from anything. The sun is its own light source. The moon is its own light source. And I, if you've been following, you didn't get that whole temperature of the moon thing, which I thought yeah. was, in, I thought that was insane when I first heard yeah, that. That's and, crazy. I and, tasted it and it's, and it's like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I laughed it. I literally, when the first time I ever heard it, when a guy called into the show at the end of 2015, I remember I was with Jonathan from, from Jersey, and he's going, and we just laughed during the break. We're going, wow. And we're in a flat <laughs> earth, and we think that's crazy. And then I said, I go, I wonder what happens at, when uh, if you take a magnifying glass and you magnify moonlight. Does it get hotter or does it get colder? And yeah, now I can, I've watched the tests, you know, from friends of mine, you know, using copper wires and water and all this stuff and very scientific. So what they, happens? Oh, it gets colder. So, so really? in the, in the moon, in the, in the moon shade, it's warm in the moonlight, it's cold and magnified moonlight is even colder, which seems makes sense only now because yeah. our tech, our technology, you can do this. We, we have the technology now it's called a cool laser. Everybody thinks, well, laser has to be hot. No, no, we can actually generate lasers in a certain wavelength that, that generate cold light. The question is, why is the moon doing that? And if the moon is yeah. doing that, that means it has nothing to do with the sun, blah, blah, blah. So when it comes to, let me swing back to your question, which I'm trying, <laughs> my, trying my best not to answer, which is the sun in, the Aust in Australia, if there's something going on with it, could there be multiple light sources? Yeah, possibly. I don't know what's going on with with the sun. I can't even prove it's a three dimensional object. Uh, uh -huh. the, one of one of the my favorite things that people came up with recently was that it reminded them of, and I thought this was really really cool. You know how you take a magnifying glass and you point it at the ground and you get that little white dot that you can turn things into, you know, burn things with that yeah. little white dot. Well, that little white dot is really hard to look at. I mean, it's it's really really bright because you're magnifying sunlight yeah. on a on a dull surface. And if you do it on like a white surface, it's extremely bright. What if the sun we were looking at was actually a projection, you know, that itself, it's just a heat spot that's being projected onto some sort of textured surface and it's generating, yeah, a whole bunch of heat, but the energy from it is coming from somewhere else. Uh, and that gets into the whole Eric Dollard thing, which the sun is just a transformer and it gets in the whole, anyway, I don't, I don't like to dwell on the sun. It's tough to explain to people and really over the radio, it's almost impossible. Yeah. So what else? I just thought it, it's interesting that he that he made that 
point and use and it was so big for him big enough to you know like step back well um, it was is that the excuse really because like tiger well, that's dan what said, so. i know i know tiger dan he was drawing when he left he was trying to come up with a new map he said there's something wrong with the map and he was trying to figure it out and he was doing daily videos was saying okay he was working on it and stretching the continents and trying to figure out flight times and then all of a sudden he freaks out says that he's going to make a 10-part series against flat earth after making just a wall of, of videos for flat earth he gets through five of them and then disappears his channel though however is still up like like literally he just walked away like he died in a car accident or something because his channel's still getting subscribers it's like it's up to like i don't know it's gonna probably break forty thousand here pretty soon he hasn't made a video in a year and a half 18 months pushing two years it's incredible so every once in a while like why why do odd back away from the community was it really because he couldn't trust me really because that's why he said he couldn't he wasn't going to the conference but he's like oh i'm not going to hang out with someone like that you can't trust him it's like that's why you're not going to go to the conference really <laughs> he was actually the first video of flat earth that i saw odd's video oh yeah uh, ODD, with those, makes, odd makes great stuff yeah he's got this dramatic music in the background and then and that was like what grabbed me that whole video of his because he's got this trilogy i think yeah uh, he makes he has earth good trilogy. he has good production value makes makes great stuff and i i was a little bit hurt i gotta say when he backs out and and he uses that as as the excuse now Part of me think, okay, well, he's the head, you know, he's the opening act, and maybe he just didn't want to be in front of people. But at the same time, wait, aren't you like promoting your music? Isn't like one of your goals to be like a big time rapper? That's that's yeah. all rappers do is sit up on stage and rap. So <laughs> whatever. Uh, he, I mean, you know, he's he's still his stuff is still out there, and he's still adding to the metrics, <laughs> which is fine. I, I don't mind. In fact, they even used his clip on uh, AB. Here's the irony. ABC News, which did that that thing on us at the conference they released recently, he wasn't even at the conference. And they used a little but clip. They used it, yeah. yeah, they used his clip in the in the video. I don't even know if he knows he was on television. I suppose somebody told him <laughs> that. Let's get down to some technical stuff. Uh, obvious sure. um, facts that, like, the if you want to call it the globe earthers versus the, the, the flat earthers. Um, mm hmm that are that should be obvious but are not like a, an example um i saw um neil degrasse tyson do like a, a, a show for someone he sat down it looked like a court environment but i'm sure it wasn't where they ask him so what is the true shape of the earth and he's like uh, it's an oblate spheroid and then he goes oh yeah he, yeah that was evolves a... it to a pear shape type of uh yep you know it's it's wider at the at the bottom of the equator more wider than the top if that right makes sense. right that so, was so then that, go ahead sorry no i'm just that's one of the things that made me wonder how the hell can you say that on tv yet nasa's pictures that they show us and pictures from the ISS and stuff all of them show us a round earth like there's no there's you know there's nothing to support that what, what he said there why would he say something like that uh, every once in a while they seem well, okay first i don't think the left hand knows what the right hand is doing Meaning, I don't think Neil deGrasse Tyson knows the whole picture. And really, you wouldn't want to tell him. Let's say I was the one that knew what the, what the true shape of the earth was. Neil, you got to have him acting naturally. So he was quoting some textbooks. And technically, he was being clever. Which is, yes. Technically, it is slightly wider below the equator than upper equator. But he should have never said pear-shaped. Never said pear-shaped. I mean, yeah, from a scientific standpoint... He, yeah, technically it's pear-shaped, but it's so gradual that you'd never be able to detect it with the human eye if if that's what he was gunning for. And he's tried to backtrack from that, but the problem was he mentioned pear shape and oblate spheroid really in the same paragraph. Which yeah. an oblate spheroid, you can look that up all day. You can type that into Google and hit images, and oblate spheroid looks nothing like a sphere nothing at all yeah. so i don't know where he was going with that and he has had just a <laughs> devil of a time trying to backtrack from that um but yeah yeah people I, I, why he went that way i don't know but it's gonna haunt him literally till his dying day because it was on video it wasn't just on audio it was video in and it was in, it was a, just a university sit down presentation where you had a bunch of uh, ner yeah. nerds sitting in the audience throwing questions 
and you know all these guys were were fans so they didn't really grill him too much on it but yeah once once we got a hold of it we weren't gonna let go tell me do you believe that we <clears throat> we are actually able to go into lower earth orbit no no i don't um, not, i think not I th- at all. meaning oh, meaning if you put something up there and it stays on its own no no, I, I think, which is the reason why the uh, the high altitude balloon projects, which has been going on with NASA since the 50s, I think that's their bread and butter, which is they figured out how to manipulate balloons and keep sat- big, big satellites up there for a long time, but they still need something to suspend them with. If it's Remember, if it's a pressurized enclosed system, when you get up there, I can't see how you again unless there's some gravitational Lagrange point or Lagrange point that uh, that's that exists up there maybe but even if it did let's say let's say there was a null gravity point up there and you shot that thing up there what what are you controlling it with what sort of thrusters what sort of I I just, I just don't see it so no I don't think I don't think technically without the aid of conventional balloon technology i don't think you're gonna you're gonna get anything up there and make it sit up there unless of course you know the people that say well we're sticking it to the dome we're bolting it to the dome it's like well okay that's a whole different thing though okay but that's like state uh, satellites in suspension but what about like if they launch a rocket up using the the motion of the uh, you know the rocket like the ISS. For no the well no no then then the you're just talking no, 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 because I, because then you know, remember we're still talking about orbiting something over a dinner plate. Uh, whatever okay. comes up, whatever comes up with conventional uh, technology has to come down, uh, which is why also why the rockets arc over and go horizontal so quickly. Uh, they, no, everything. No, that's not to say that there aren't things flying around up there. Remember, I, I've said many times that if you take night vision binoculars and you, and you start poking around up there, you'll see a lot of stuff flying around. But I don't think I don't think most of it's us. I think it's older civilizations using unified field engines, and they can they can hang out there up all they want. But we're, if we had unified field technology, which is basically anti gravity technology, propulsion systems, mm-hmm. we're not going to waste it on satellites. The, the, the only people that are going to get a hold of that is the oh, that's, that's that's military only. So, um, have you seen the videos of Skylab? Um, that they filmed up there while those first three guys were up there for 40 days or 44 days back in the um, 70s you know, the yes yeah so that that footage was from the 70s and they performed some pretty pretty convincing uh, maneuvers up there that let me that's also a thing that like kind of sidetracked me in thinking wow how can they be how can they be faking this before it was actually because i mean back in the 70s there, there was no you know, the, the, the technology wasn't there to fake something like that. Well, I mean, you're absolutely you know, right. Well, the, the good in circles and the good technology <laughs> was not there back in the 1970s. However, your old school, I mean, talk about your, your old tricks of the best tricks. The um, parabolic flight planes, you know, otherwise known as the vomit comet. And if you guys don't know what the vomit comet means, you haven't been to an amusement park. The human stomach does not like being in a negative gravity scenario. It, it makes you feel yeah. like you want to naturally throw up. So, but those planes have been around forever. Ever, ever since we had jet planes, we've, we've, we've had the ability to do that, which is use parabolic flight. You just put, again, goes along the whole lines of why are, why is the ISS and why is Skylab and why are all these space things only the width of the average airplane, you know, the average jetliner, you, because you hollow out the planes. You can look this up. I mean, because they train these, it's called a zero G plane. They train the astronauts on them and they, this is, you know, how long would it take? You're training people on this and going, Hey, it looks just like the, you know, what it, the real thing. Well, heck, why don't we just put them in freaking spacesuits and d- decorate the, the inside of this thing. And we can do zero G stuff for the most part. Use so, wa- I'm sorry, go ahead. So do, do you think that, um, people that are like going out of school into they want to become astronauts now right. do you think it's easy to i mean obviously they think they you are able to go into space and you're going to go train and this is your career mm-hmm. and uh, all those type of things um do you think it's easy uh to convince someone i mean there's a show a british show called space cadets i don't yep, know, if you know, I, I know it i know that uh, show yeah where they convince people uh, that they're going in space 
Do you, is it like that for all no, of the astronauts? No, 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 no. That's different. So for Space Cadets, they that was like a, a giant version of the American show Punked, where they literally put people into a space simulator, just civilians, and after a yeah. whole bunch of training, and they convinced them that they they had shot them up in the sky. Of course, it helps when you have a couple actors that are playing along with it. You know, you have some inside guys. But when it comes to the military, and by that I mean NASA or any of the other space agencies, remember, NASA is Department of Defense. They are military all the way around. Those guys start out as Air Force. They are United States Air Force. They are pilots first. They are, um, and they are pretty high ranking. So like Terry Vertz, the guy that I interviewed, uh, or I'm sorry, that I, that I was trying to talk to at uh, Good Morning London or Good Morning UK, he was a full-blown, if you know anything about military ranks, he was a commander in the United States Air Force, was the equivalent of a full bird colonel. And mm. if you can make it up that far, you you basically know how to keep your mouth shut. So when it comes to fooling those guys, remember, military, they sign the disclosure agreements, and they're very, very strict, saying uh -huh. if, if you have a disclosure agreement that says, look, we're going to have you do something. And you have to follow orders. If you want to retire from the military, that's fine. But the disclosure agreement still means you got to keep your mouth shut. If you don't, we can bring you up on treason. It will not be a civilian civilian court. No one's going to know about it. And you will never see the light of day again if you even survive. That's all it takes. You know, just one signature. And these guys know this. It's military. You know, they, they are expected to know this. And so that's all they do. They, they tell them, look, and this is different from the Apollo guys. With uh, everybody now in the military, they just sign a non-disclosure agreement saying, okay, you're going to fake something, but it's not, you're, you're not in the right pay grade to even ask why, you know, like follow orders, don't ask why, just follow freaking orders. And so they do it and it's like, and, and really ignorance is bliss because then they can fly around and, and their khakis and their polo shirts and their socks and they can play golf and throw footballs around and get in gorilla suits and all that other cute stuff that makes no freaking sense and <laughs> and act perfectly naturally even though a, a micrometeor hits that thing the size of a nickel and they're all dead nobody seems worried about it at all not to mention it should be gross and grimy and nobody has hair nets they shouldn't even nobody should even have hair at all they would completely clog up the systems but that's a whole other thing so the point is is yeah. that they you don't have to con fool them at all all you have to do is make sure they're on board. And you psychologically profile any of these guys anyway. That's a simple test. That's an oh, hour. Okay. Sit them down say, okay, are you willing to do something for national security, even though it might be a little underhanded? And they say, well, national security? Sure, why not? And that's what I even said during that interview where I said, look, I go, he's a colonel. He's not going to tell you any national secrets right now. You know, he's just going to, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to say, oh, the Earth's a globe. Hey, great. Thumbs up. So... You should actually send me the link to that interview. I want to watch that. Okay, okay. I'll send it to you. <clears throat> um, all right, back down to Earth. Um, mm, Antarctica is a very, very interesting uh, subject for me. Um, you know, you I know you. they got the, the um, what do you call that? Uh, where all the countries um, signed up for that oh, you're not allowed to go down there. Oh, the Antarctic Treaty. Sure. Yes. Um, yeah. So, but... How come I've seen footage of people that fly around on, you know, over Antarctica? I know it, it's a big, like the way they say it is, it's quite big. So you can't like, you uh, can, you can, claim you can, that, oh. yeah, you can go down there. Like if you tomorrow wanted to go down there and it's probably cheaper for you because you're closer. Uh, huh. but you can, you can pay money and go down there tomorrow and you can get on a little charter flight and they'll fly you what, to what they say is the South Pole. No commercial airliners fly over it anymore. In fact, they haven't uh, since the 1970s. They were, they were very, very limited up until that point, as you can imagine, because it is the shortest mm. distance between two points. Interesting, because, you know, people fly over the North Pole all the time you know, to, to, save, to save time. But over the South Pole, because some airliners supposedly crashed into a mountain, why a crash would affect is they've said, oh, yep, that's it. No more flights over Antarctica ever, ever again. What was, I thought they said it's because it's too cold. Well, that too. Again, depends on who you talk to. Some people have said, well, it's oh. too cold. I'm going, what are you talking about? I could fly over the middle of the desert here, and it's still, what, negative 20 degrees or whatever it is. I mean, it's very, yeah. very cold. Most, If you get in a plane crash, like in a mid-air collision, you're going to freeze to death long before you hit the ground. It's, it's yeah, that yeah. cold when you get up there. 
So, uh, but the, the bigger thing, of course, is the Antarctic Treaty is that corporations, that's the big one, which is, and again, if you guys know anything about treaties, it is the biggest, uh, it's, the, it's the most unbroken treaty in the history of treaties, which is no corporation from any country can ever set up shop in Antarctica ever. Ever, ever, ever. It was set up in 1959. It won't, it's not up until uh, until 2041 for the first review. 2041. <clears throat> it's, 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 treaties were meant to be broken. That's the whole point of treaties. People break them all the time. Yeah, yeah. It, find me a treaty where every single nation on earth that signs it doesn't even protest it. I, I mean, there's yeah. people want resources. The Chinese, they could use the resources. The Russians could use the resources. The UK, I mean, nobody wants wants the stuff. You're not even allowed to protest. Uh, the part that I like to throw out real quick is the um, that let's say I was the head of Exxon Mobil, you know, a big big oil and gas company, and I mm -hmm. want to go down there. I should be able to just go to the New York Times and run a full page ad once every week and say how great it would be for Mark's Exxon Mobil to go down to Antarctica. I'm not even allowed to do that. So why not? It's huh. it's like it, you you're just not supposed to talk about it. Yeah, huh? <clears throat> I heard I heard a radio. Uh, it was a podcast, but uh, they had a guy phone in, all discreet and stuff. Um, it was uh, Australian radio show. Uh -huh. uh, can't exactly remember the name, but they had this guy claiming that he had access uh, to. Um, a vehicle that, and he was like all about, you can penetrate the, the barrier and it's real and he's planning an expedition and he was gathering funds to take people on this expedition and uh, okay. show them and, and bring them back. But it, I, I'll actually try and find it again and then send you the link. Oh, send um, that to me. I'd love to hear it. So he's saying he basically has a, a, a unified, <laughs> basically a UFO that, that, can, that well, can get there? Well, he, he says that there's only, uh, I think he mentioned the number 15 or 14 people that have, like, that are in control of that whole situation down there. Hmm. Um, that are able to come and go as you want and stuff like that. Um, and uh, he also said something about, you can't go through the, let's call it the, the barrier for now. Sure. Um, with, with any modern type of technology, planes or anything like that, anything that uses electronics and stuff, because that doesn't work down there. Like, GPS doesn't work down there. Yeah. Um. And then they were like, okay, so why did Admiral Burke, why did he, why was he able to go through and, and, you know, explore there? So he says like the technology back then, the planes and stuff that they used uh, were more mechanical. And so that, that's obviously like a loophole that he slipped through without knowing it. Huh. Uh, he could go and explore there. I could and, see that. Uh, and they, yeah. they have a, uh, uh, they put up a picture. Now, obviously me as a conspiracy theorist, I can spot a fake picture from a mile away, you know, in, in, of the earth and all that. So they've, yeah. they had the picture up of what he claimed was what the edge looked like, uh, like the start of the dome upwards. Mm -hmm. And it looked more like a type of a, if you were to imagine the waves of the ocean being pressed against something, uh, it makes like a, a general, like a light curve to the, you know, upwards. And then, okay. um, You'll make more sense of it when you see it. But this guy was convinced he needs a couple of million to... Uh, he basically sold seats on this vessel of his. Oh, boy. Um, but he wasn't able to say exactly certain points. He, could, he couldn't, like, clarify for these people. So they were... The question that they ask, they could see that, okay, we can't ask this. So they tried to ask it another way. Um, and he answered a whole bunch of questions also that confirms that... Uh, everything is controlled and uh, only a few big ha heads, you can say, have control over that. Yeah. And he was one of the whistleblowers, and but he still was involved and he had access. And then a few months later, I, I came across a video of them saying that he now has the the, um, the funds that he needed initially to do this. Hmm. And it's on. He's going. He's going. He's taking people there. And when they come back, whatever footage they were able to take there or proof that they were to bring back, if they wanted to put it in mainstream media, which obviously would be crushed first sight of it. I mean, oh my god, it's yeah, like, yeah, it's like me, if one of me or you going to ABC News and giving them a flat earth video of, of YouTube. Oh, in fact, yeah, you could, you could not give it to mainstream media, you'd have to release it on your own somewhere on the internet and, and hope to God that uh, that it got spread far enough before they uh, they started going after it. Because... Yeah, because there's not even a right person that you can approach. There's not one person 
that is not um how can i say oh like, yeah no yeah who of this whole thing yeah who could you trust if you had the unedited footage if you had a different movie of how jfk died right now yeah if you if i had it in my position i literally don't know who i could go to with it exactly. to, that's, that's to how i feel it. with the flat earth as well if you have proof if you have proof someone asked oh, a lot of people say to me yeah so show me a picture of the flat earth yeah, let's I say know. you did actually find a way of going up there and taking a picture seeing it's flat right but i mean who would believe you in any yeah who would believe you and not only that that picture would probably get you killed or for, yeah. for a while anyway yeah that, that picture people ask me that too and they go where's the picture i'm just going are you kidding if i had the picture would i be talking to you right now i'd be <laughs> i'd be the most famous person in the world uh, no one the famous most famous person that was killed yeah exactly his last picture before he before he died yeah yeah, yeah. how do they do the the 24 hour footages of the camera that like spins around and follows the the sun um in antarctica where they, you know, where the sun goes basically down, but doesn't set completely, and then goes up again, and then down again in a circle. How I, does that work? I don't <laughs> know exactly because there's there's multiple schools of thought here, and that is if you if you're like a DITRH or Jaronism follower, they believe that there is no unedited footage of the sun in Antarctica, and to where Jaronism uh, was actually contacting the, the some of the stations down there, and they're saying, oh, we don't have the 24-hour footage because we don't have that much bandwidth uh, or hard drive space or something along those lines. Like, what are you talking about? Because there were these big gaps. It would like go like 16, 18 hours, and then it would jump. Um, if it was true, if it was, there was actual footage, again, I would, I would defer back to either multiple light sources or hell, I'd use the, um, I'll, I'll do something old school, which I hadn't really used before, which is the miracle at Fatima. If you ever remember hearing about that damn thing where, What's uh, that? the day of the sun, where the, 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 the girls, the, these girls that were supposedly given three prophetic things, uh, at Fatima, look that up if you get a chance, but before it happened, there were the sun apparently in front of thousands and thousands of people was dancing around in the sky you know just moving around it wasn't like a ufo dancing around the sky it was like the sun was dancing around the sky which leads me to believe that uh the sun can be regional in some cases uh, it's so small that you can do things optically which can you can change things for people in a certain way kind of like the truman show remember when he said you know they said yeah, yeah. Cue, cue the sun I, I always thought it was weird, but it didn't it didn't make much sense to me until I got into flat Earth, and then yeah. and of course that was the you know two of the, the the things were revealed two of the secrets, but the third one supposedly was only told to the Pope and he never released it because he said it would be too damaging to civilization as we know it. And I was going, wow, well flat Earth could be that thing. Why not? So and you'll never know. Uh, probably not. Well, we'll see. The rate this thing's speeding up so i got about 15 minutes left what, what else you want to do all right yeah. there's two more things that i need to cover here okay. first thing is uh we did touch on it earlier the flight paths uh in the southern hemisphere right um people say that they claim there's no flights that go from us south africa to australia and to also to um Argent uh, um, uh what's in south america that uh, country there oh but oh like like, like the tip of uh, like Chile, Buenos Aires, Bu like Buenos Chile Aires or Santiago, Chile. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They have to always fly into the northern. But I know people that have been on those flights. I've got video footage of the flight that went from South Africa to Australia. Straight, yep, yep, one yep, shot. Yep. And and that was literally one of the first emails I received. The clues weren't even done when I started getting those emails because when I initially looked, again, this is we're talking about Clue Seven, which is the long haul, and Clue Nine, the magic mm -hmm. show. Clue seven said that look, okay, one, first off, let's let's get the, the, the best part out of the way, which is even you gotta admit, there's almost no non-stops in the southern hemisphere. There's so very few that it mm -hmm. statistically that shouldn't that should not be the case. I mean, the nor northern hemisphere, you can get non-stops anywhere. It's just a question of yeah, when yeah. you want to fly and how much money you want to pay. In the southern hemisphere, yeah. and I know this because the um, I talked to a travel agent that was down there, a corporate travel agent, and she said people complain all the time in the southern hemisphere that they can't get freaking nonstops from capital cities. It's like, look, we, we'll pay ten thousand dollars. Like, nope, can't get it. But as for do I think those flights exist? Yes, I do. I, I really do. But at the same time, that's when I got to Clue Nine because I was going, I was trying to watch these flights. 
on the freaking flight trackers. And then they yeah. started dropping the, the latitude and longitudes. The longitudes started dropping off. And they start going in approximated or estimated mode. And I was going, okay, well, the flights may exist, but I can't pl- prove the routes. Then people start coming back and saying, you know, recently pilots have said, that's like, no, 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 we know where we are. Nobody else knows where we are. And I'm, and I'm thinking, you know what? I don't know if you know where you are exactly, because that would be one of those things you would kind of fudge for the pilots, because you don't want to freak pilots out. You know, you'd give them probably an approximated or estimated latitude and longitude, so they just keep going the way they're doing, feed, you know, feed it into the computers and let them go where they want to go. But again, the general population, it is interesting that ground radar, once they get outside of ground radar range, they disappear. Which goes into the yeah. whole the Malaysian thing, you know, why the Malaysian flights, flagships, triple sevens, gone. But it's weird that they say that. I mean, if you if you look at that flight on a flat Earth map, mm-hmm. that it, it's so much further. Uh, you know, the time spent. If you oh, were oh, to if, calculate, the- yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're going way across those oceans, which is why I think the GPS system cuts corners, and you go across as little amount of ocean as possible. And honestly, pilots, if you know any, and I've, I've known a few, is like they just want to get from point A to point B. As long as nobody dies, hey, that's a great day. So they're not looking down all the time. But yeah, so one of them might say, hey, shouldn't we be over water right now? And they will try to do that as much as possible. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Do they take that long, long <laughs> way around over the ocean? Nope. Nope. I think the South Pacific is one of the least traveled places in the world because there's nothing out there. Even though you should have to fly across a lot of it, I don't think they do. Because there's, it doesn't do you any good. It just wastes fuel. I I try to, because um, I've got a few friends whose fathers are uh, commercial pilots, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I try to raise the question. I'm obviously seen as a crazy person from their perspective. Of course, of course. Uh, you know, but they've got their belief. I believe they've got their belief on how things are, and who are you to tell them different? Because uh, they've studied for this. Uh, their whole lives and they do this every day sure. so who am i to come in and then try and prove them different I yet know. you want to you want to strangle them and tell them just to open their eyes and and look at what's going on because uh, i don't know it's it's so hard to get through to pilots where other pilots come and say well we know the earth is flat i mean we see it every day yep. they just don't I it mean, is a it is a paradox. Some will go for it, some won't. It's just the conditioning. But it is a paradox that all fi- pilots have to deal with. Which and they all say every one of them uh, I've talked to said the same thing, and that is, yeah, from the cockpit because you have that one eighty view, you see yeah. it's absolutely flat. But it can't be yeah. flat because you've been told your whole life it's a globe. And so, but yeah. but then they get you know what? As long as we land, screw it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mess with it because who? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna go back to your your airline company? You go to the FAA. You're gonna say, "Because you hey. had a, a pilot that did that, and she got fired." Well, she fired herself. Basically, she yeah. she uh, she went to the doctor and she put it to him, and he's going, "Look, I can't let you up there. I let can't let you continue to fly." No, no, she didn't get fired. No, she was put on desk duty. You know, they they yeah, yeah, they, she gr- got they, yes. they ground them. They don't fire them, which would even be a better story. But they said, look, I can't put you up in that plane if you think that the Earth is uh, flat. And the Navy guy that I was uh, talking to, that Navy missile commander, he he was kind of doing the same sort of thing. He was very clever. He was actually trying to get out of the Navy. And had they canned him for like a psychological psychological evaluation, that's a that's a book waiting to happen. It's like I was fi- okay. I was I was drummed out of the military because I believed in the flat okay. Earth. And so he was going to win either way. But if they don't do it, then, well, I, I sl- sort of become famous and I inspire other people. So, yeah, <laughs> it's weird. Um, they say gravity doesn't exist and they and they uh, boil it down to density and buoyancy. Are you also one of those followers? No, no, I am not. Uh, I do. Now, I do believe in air pressure and I do believe in some sort of buoyancy uh, because it's a it's a pressurized system. If it's an enclosed world. I believe in a pressurized system because that goes along with why does the immense power of the vacuum of space not sh- rip off this this uh, atmosphere like a prom dress, uh, yeah. and it and it really should because the um, uh, it, it, we're talking about uh, there's stuff that's lighter you know down here where we're breathing it's nitrogen and oxygen it's fairly heavy but there's a lot mm. of stuff like helium and hydrogen and ozone and fluorocarbons. 
they're all they're all flying up to the edge of space and those should be just ripped off i mean those are just hanging out up there why isn't the vacuum of space just tearing those off but when it mm. comes to gravity uh, remember i come from a, a computer background and gravity is what you say it is meaning it's just molecular magnetism i i go back and i ask mainstream science my argument they say well what's gravity on a flat earth i go what's gravity on a globe you know, even Neil Tyson says that we can't tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does on a flat yeah, yeah. earth, you know, on a globe. It's a it's a molecular magnetic force that attracts organics and everything else that's drawing it towards the center on a flat earth. It's a molecular magnetic force, which just draws things straight down. And that's yeah. that's and they act really identical to each other. So, I mean, if people want to go with the whole buoyancy thing, that's fine. And, and I get it. I mean, it's actually not a not a terrible argument. And if that turns out to be the case, I, I I won't lose any sleep. I just know how I would design it because that's what we're doing now in our simulations. It's called a physics engine, and we yeah. can we can just make it whatever we want. But but with the density and buoyancy, someone told me like they they have a problem believing that because if you drop two things with different masses and different densities uh, at the same time towards right. the ground, right. they fall and they and they fall at the same time and reach the ground at the same time. So how can density be? How can it be selective? As they say, gravity is. Um, both items are not the same density, yet they fall at the same speed so i mean uh, yeah do you know what i mean yeah i do i've seen the giant all these that, things have holes in <laughs> i know brian brian cox did the giant vacuum chamber the giant vacuum chamber was pretty cool where he dropped a feather and a bowling ball i think or a brick at the same time and and they landed yeah. at the same time and uh, you could tell there was a genuine feather and it was really kind of cool to watch does i think do i think that proves i mean obviously it could it's, for me it's probably a combination of both because you remember, I mean, yes, we are living in a pressure in, you know, there's air pressure down here. Obviously, we we can feel it, um, mm. a barometric pressure. But uh, do I do I think there's also a gravitational force? Yeah, I do. Because I also believe in magnetics. If you've seen magnets work, it's not that much of a jump from general magnetics to an organic magnetic. Just because a magnet can't pick up a, a, a tree doesn't mean that something else can't. And yeah, yeah. I, I think that's, I think it's very, very possible. <clears throat> so. All right. To, uh, to end this huge conversation and I'm, I'm planning on having another one with you because I've okay. only touched on a few things. Oh, that's fine. Um, I found out something today. I, I made a, a connection with something that I feel, I can't believe that it's so obvious that no one has actually noticed it, but I don't know. Have you seen or heard about this character called? Red's rhetoric on YouTube. <laughs> the fact that you pronounced it like that is hilarious. Yeah, red. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I pronounce. We pronounce it Red's rhetoric, and okay. uh, yeah, when he started with us, I think he was like 15 years old, and now he's well, now he's 18, so or maybe pushing 19. Uh, have, yeah. have you met this guy? Or do you nobody's know no, no, no. Person? He is a true troll. He does not show his face. Nobody knows his name. He has never let it slip. He, I understand he's like a garage mechanic somewhere, or used to be. Uh, so why, why, what, what, what? Do you what know, about? I know who that is. You know who Red's rhetoric is? He's Eric Dubé. Do you, th do you actually think it's Eric Dubé? I, I, I watched the video of Eric Dubé yesterday, and ironically, directly after that, I came across a video where this Red's guy was in a debate with someone else. On you know a live debate, there yeah. were three people: he, him and the host and another guy. Yeah. And they, they were ranting on about uh, some some video of uh, the SpaceX uh, satellites being launched yeah. and the moon doing some weird shape or movement in the video. Yeah. And this guy, this red guy, he, he started off all calm and talking normally, and I thought, wait a minute, this sounds like Eric. And the more he spoke, the more I, I'm like, what the hell? And then I noticed he notices he's sounding too much like himself. Then he starts pitching up his voice a little. And then he starts swearing and he cusses everything. And then he like goes into character. But he started off the call as Eric. And I, you could you could hear. If you cannot hear the difference between those two voices, oh, what? you need and, to hear it. And you'd, and you'd bet money on this. You're, you're pretty convinced of this. I would bet money on it. All right. That's, would, that's, 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 why he doesn't, why, that's why he doesn't want to show his face. He's never going to show his face. Like, that's an interesting theory because, of course, you know, Eric's, especially with the skit stuff that he does, he does. And he's disappeared now. 
he yeah he does quite a few little voices and 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 characters and i was normally i was going to say oh eric doesn't swear that much but if he was if he had an alter ego <laughs> that's interesting yeah, definitely, and definitely. and you i will say this he that. and normally i'd be like eh, i don't know but I, I will give you a little bit of credibility here because he did sneak on i absolutely know this for a fact he snuck on to a hangout that i was on under a different name and uh -huh. only slightly changed his voice and he was and he said on there it was kind of reinforcing that uh that crow triple seven thing where he asked hey mm. if eric's people find you better footage of the moon than crow triple seven will you use it and i said yeah of course i will if somebody actually gets me better footage i don't know who's gonna do that but no. he, but i knew i knew it was eric when i when i heard this i was going oh, okay i see what you're doing there uh, and but he went under a different name. That is really an interesting theory. I'm gonna I have to dig into that for a little bit. I'm also gonna uh, see if I can find out more about this because when I heard it and then I I thought okay well I have to look at this. This is this is like in your face. Right. Um. And the more videos I watched and li listened to this guy's voice, yeah, you can hear in which in which interviews or which uh, things on YouTube he, he focuses on how he has to speak. Yeah. And then you can hear yeah, there's there's a few of them where he slips back into the comfort zone of how he normally speaks. And then it, 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 he does no effort whatsoever to sound different. And then it's so in your face obvious. Interesting. Right on, man. It's good. It's good. <laughs> I had, I had, I, I'm going to have to look into it. I'm glad we could have had this talk. This was so yeah. much interesting info. Um, I uh, appreciate your time and uh, oh, no I'm glad that we could finally make it happen. Well, I, at one point I thought this is not going to happen. <laughs> uh, well, no, I, I know. It's, well, look, you're on the other side of the world.